Hi kindergarten, today we're gonna to come together to learn two more three-dimensional shapes. But before we do that, I wanna review the two three-dimensional shapes that we've already learned. And those were the sphere and the cube, okay? So we talked about these two three-dimensional shapes earlier this week, and we learned that the sphere has is solid form all the way around. It has zero sides and zero vertices. And it's also, um, like I said, three-dimensional shape because it's solid. It looks to be the shape of a circle, but the, uh, the circle is two-dimensional because it is flat. And the sphere, we know, is not flat, okay? It has form. We also learned about the cube that if I were to trace its flat surface or the face, we know that it looks like what shape? Correct, it looks like the square with four equal sides and four vertices but we call it a three-dimensional shape because the cube has form. We can hold it, it's a solid, and it, if we turned it, we would see that it's a square on many different sides. All right, great job, guys. We're gonna learn two new shapes today, and this shape, I bet a lot of you have different things in your pantry that are shaped like this. This shape is called a cylinder, okay? Now, a cylinder can be turned like this, or it can also be this way, okay? What's uh, neat about the cylinder is that if we look at its base or um, the top and bottom of this jar, what shape does that look like? What two-dimensional shape? Awesome, it looks like a circle, right? Look at the bottom, it also looks like the circle, all right? So but when we curve this around here, this curve is what's kind of part of the can as well. So it's got two, flatter circular bases or faces, and it also has that curve, okay? This can of tuna fish is also a cylinder. What makes it a cylinder is that it has two circular bases, okay, or faces, and it also has that curve. Awesome job. And here's a yet another yummy, yummy peanut butter jiff. It's got that circular base here as well as here, and it also has that curve. All right, so what were these called again, guys? Do you remember? These were called cylinders. Awesome job. Let's talk and review about one more new three-dimensional shape. I found this in my garage. You know what it is? You call it by its actual, actual three-dimensional shape. This is a cone, right? And the cone should really have its point at the top, its vertex. Mine's a little bit more rounded, but a true cone has that vertex at the top and its base is circular. So you don't have to really pay attention to this part. A cone's always gonna have that circular base, right? And it's gonna have that true vertex or point at the top, okay? Unfortunately, I couldn't really find a whole lot of cone-shaped objects in my house because cones are really hard to find. Um, but we definitely found a lot of spheres and cubes and cylinders. So you can, if you want to, after this video, just hunt for some objects around your house that are spheres, cubes, cones, and um, cylinders and see if you can do some of these experiments to make sure that we did them right. All right, because that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna look at these three words and they're all verbs or actions. And we know that they're actions because it's something we can do. It's a verb. So you can echo me, say these three words with me. Say roll, slide, stack. Very good. Let's say them again. Ready? Roll, slide, stack. Awesome job. I'm going to grab the first object here, which you guys recall is a sphere. It's perfectly rounded all the way around with zero sides and zero vertices. Do you think the sphere will roll? Meaning if I push it a little, do you think it would move on its own and keep turning? Let's see, okay? Here we go. It definitely rolls, do you see it? Let's try this way, closer to you, ready? A little push. Oh, it wants to move this way, there you go. It's definitely rolling. So we can in fact say that the sphere can roll. Good job. Now let's do this experiment. Do you think the sphere can slide? Which means if I took this object and pushed it, do we think it would be able to slide or glide across my smooth flat surface, which is a table? Do you think it could stay on its one um, part here and slide or glide across? Let's say, ready? I'm gonna give it a little push. No, it definitely does not wanna slide. Look, I'll try it again. 
Oh, it's not moving there. I'll give it a little push. Oh, no, it wants to roll, but it does not want to slide. So I cannot put a sphere under that category. Let's look at this word, and the word is stack. Can I, in fact, stack spheres almost like so that they could stand on their own? Like when you're building towers with blocks, do you think these two spheres can stack? Let's see. Oh no, they rolled right off of each other. They have no flat surfaces, remember? They're round all the way around. Let's try again, ready? Nope, they definitely don't wanna stack. So I cannot put a sphere under either of these two categories. We do know, however, that the sphere can roll. Awesome job. Let's go to this shape, boys and girls. This shape, if you remember, is a cylinder. This shape has two circular uh, parts and it also has that curve. Okay, so let's do this experiment. Do we think that the cylinder can roll this way? Remember, it's on its flat surface. Do you think that this side of the cylinder could roll or turn on its own? Let's see, ready? Mm, it's not rolling that way. Let's see if the cylinder can roll on its curved surface. Okay, ready? I'm gonna push it and see if it keeps turning towards you. Ah, that part rolled, look. So the curved part rolled, it's even rolling back to me, but the flat part could not roll, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and, and put that, my experiment, I did find that the curved part could in fact roll. So I'm gonna put that in that category. Can the cylinder slide or move across this table after I gave it a little push? And I actually think you got to see that in the last experiment that I did. Let's see, can this side, slide it has a flat surface here can it slide let's say yes it can slide on its flat surfaces do you think a cylinder can slide on its curve let's say no it keeps wanting to roll but a cylinder can slide on its flat circular base so i am going to put cylinder under this category it can slide let's see if it can stack Okay, let's start on its curved surface, okay? Let's see, if I were to put the peanut butter here and the baked beans here, do you think they'll be able to stack on their own without moving? I, I, if I hold them, yeah, we could say they're, I'm, I'm trying to stack them that way, but if I let go, do you think they'll stay together on top of one another? Let's say, uh, oh, definitely not. They cannot stack, they cannot stand together on their own, but let's go from their flat surface. Here's that circular flat base. And here's another circular flat base on this cylinder. Up, oh, they can in fact stack this way. All right, see how that power was made? Awesome, so we do know that the cylinder can stack, but it can only stack on its flat circular base. Awesome job, guys. Let's keep going. We're gonna talk about the cube right now. And if you remember, the cube has these flat surfaces that are shaped like a square okay i'll grab my certain objects that we talked about this week that are shaped like a square we have the die we have these little connecting cubes and we have my own sun's alarm clock do you think that the cube can roll remember it has some flat surfaces it's not curved it has flat surfaces so do you think it can roll do you think it can move towards you if i give it a little push let's say ready rolled a little bit not as well as the sphere but it did roll or turn on its side a few times so let's see with this orange connecting cube ready see if it rolls a few times let's try with the bigger cube here that looks like this ready wow that rolled really well okay so we know that the cube does in fact roll not as well as the sphere but it can still roll all right do you think that the cubes can slide. Let's go get my bigger box, which is also the shape of a cube. Do you think this can slide or glide across the table if I were to push it? Ready? I'm gonna push and see if it can slide, stay on its one surface and just move. Ready? Here we go. That definitely did slide. Let's see if this can slide. Ready? It's also a cube. It's smaller, but let's try. Awesome, and last one, let's see if the alarm clock that's shaped like a cube can slide. Whoa, yep, that definitely slid as well. So I can get my um, cube again and I can put it under that category. 
the cube can in fact slide. Do you think that they can stack? Can they stand up on each other? I bet you already know. I'm sure you guys have played a lot with blocks in preschool, right? Blocks are also the shape of a cube. Very good. So let's see. I'm doing from biggest to smallest here. See it. Whoop. Are they stacking? Are they standing by themselves? If I let go, they're not falling apart, are they? No. They are, in fact, stacking. Very good. All right. So I can also say that the cube, boys and girls, can stack. All right, let's do our last uh, three-dimensional shape together, which is the cone. Now remember, my cone here is not a perfect vertex at the top, but it should be, okay, with that point. And pay attention that the circular base is um, part of the cone too, okay? So let's see if we think the uh, cone can roll. Now let's think, if it was on its point, do you think it could roll and turn? No, not on its vertex. Do you think it could roll on its flat circular base? So remember the cylinder had that circular base too. Could it roll? No, it couldn't roll on that side. But look, this is a little bit curved. So if I gave it a little push, now because it's square down here, that's going to kind of prevent it from giving it that full roll. But because this cone is curved, it will roll a little bit, not as well as this sphere, but because it has that curve, it will roll. So let's say, and if I tried to get rid of this base down here, this is like a square, that's what's kind of stopping it. But if you actually got an ice cream cone and experimented with this or a party hat, you could see that it would roll a little bit. So I can do that. I could say that the cone can in fact roll. All right. This wasn't a perfect cone, so this was this experiment was a little bit harder, but see if you can uh, find something that's a true cone at home and practice with that experiment for rolling, okay? Can this slide? What do you think? Could it slide on its pointy vertex? If I were to slide this, remember it's pointed, could it slide? No, it would fall right over. How about on its circular base? Remember the cylinder has that circular base. Could these slide going this way on their flat surfaces? Yes, they absolutely could. So the cone can in fact slide and it can roll a little bit. Let's see if the cone can stack. Remember stacking is like the cylinder we said could stack. And we also said that the cube could stack because they have flat surfaces that helps them stack. So let's see an experiment. Do you think the cone could stack on its point? Is that a flat surface? No. So if I tried to stand up that corner and stack another cone or object, no way, it would fall right over. What if I were to put it on its flat surface and it had that vertex up here, would something else be able to stack? No, it would topple over again because of that vertex. But look what's different about the cone. If you put a cube down, could this cone on its circular flat surface stack? Let's try. Look, it does in fact stack on its circular flat surface. It will not stack on its vertex, right? Because at that point, it'll topple over, but it can go ahead and stack on its flat circular uh, surface. Okay, so remember, if I were to put something else though on top of this cone, because of that vertex, it would topple over. The cone can only stack on top of something with its flat surface. So you can go ahead and say it can stack only though on its flat surface. I hope you guys learned a lot about three-dimensional shapes with me today. Continue practicing and reviewing with your vocabulary cards at home. And like I said, if you want to go around your house and find a few three-dimensional objects that are shaped like a sphere, cylinder, cube, and cone, you can also try to experiment and see if your shapes that you got we're able to roll, slide, and stack. Thanks, guys.